And now, Boris Karloff, another of your stars on parade. Transcribed from New York City, your Army and your Air Force present Big Man, a suspenseful drama starring as Al Carto, Boris Karloff. Good morning, Mr. Cardo. Hi. The doctor's all ready. Now, if you'll slide under this table, we'll take you into the operating room. Hey, what happened? I thought Doc Marini was supposed to do this job at seven. Oh, the doc's been up quite a while. Just got through another operation. Maybe he's all tired out. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Cardo. Dr. Marini's a little iron man, one of the best surgeons around. And there's nothing to an appendicitis operation these days. As I left that gloomy little room, I figured how lucky I'd been to get it. It was on the ground floor, and its single window opened onto a narrow alley. The pavement was only four feet below the sill, and the street only a hop, skip, and a jump. It fitted my plans perfectly. As the orderly rolled me along the corridor, I could smell the heavy odor of ether, and I did start to worry. I was putting my life in the hands of someone else, completely, but... But I knew Doc Marini was a good surgeon, and I trusted him. And it's funny, but he actually gave me my big idea. For a couple of days, I'd had nasty pains, and I finally went to see him. <laughs> There's, there is nothing the matter with you, Al, except a case of acute appendicitis. Appendicitis? Well, sure, Al, lots of people get it. Well, look, Doc, isn't there something you can do besides operate? Mm, sure. Sure, we can leave your appendix in, but I won't guarantee your health for more than 24 hours. Oh, it's that bad. How long will I be laid up? Well, our new theory is to get patients right up in a day or two. You mean I'll be able to walk? Well, of course. Actually, you could get up just a few hours after the operation if you had to. And, uh, Al, we'll do the operation in the old Mercy Hospital, just in back of where you live. In a matter of hours, I could get up. I'd be in a hospital directly in back of the tenement where I lived. If I could arrange the hospital room I needed, it would be a perfect setup. What an idea Doc Marini had given me. What an alibi. A guy in a hospital bed, sick and in pain from a major operation. It was the chance I'd been trying to find for months. With practically no risk, I could get rid of the one person who was blocking me from becoming a really big man. I could kill Rose, my wife. I hadn't come to this decision suddenly. I thought about it for quite a while, but there was no safe, sure way to do it. So I'd continue to put up with Rose's stupid nonsense. Al, please put, stop reading that paper and listen to okay, me. Okay, Rose, what is it now? Well, I'm worried. You haven't worked in months. We and... got a lot of dough. Oh, yes, but... Oh, please, Al, tell me where you've been getting now, it. Now, look, Rose, I've told you before that I can't. If you'd only agree to move away from this broken-down, filthy neighborhood, you'd change your ideas. Oh, Al, I was born here. I like it. But, well, Al, I don't like what's going on. I wish you'd tell me what you're doing. That was the kind of stuff I'd had to put up with. And now, if some way Rose found out what was going on, she might get excited and blow the whole set up to bits. I'd outgrown her anyway. She was just a tenement brat, born and bred, and she'd never be anything else. After 15 years, I was sick of her and her constant whining. Then she pulled a fast one that almost made me blow my top. I was in the living room when she walked in with the biggest German shepherd dog I'd ever seen. Rose, what are you doing with that mutt? My sister gave him to me, Al. His name is Get Tiny. him out of here. I can't stand dogs. Oh, please, Al. Please let me keep him. Irene bought Tiny a week ago. She thought she'd like him for company because Maddie's working every You heard what I said. Get rid of that mutt. Oh, please, Al, please. Stop saying please. But, Al, Tiny was too rough for my sister's baby, and she <coughs> has to have... Oh, shh, Tiny, please, Tiny. Oh, Al, Al, I want to keep him. I want to keep him. I knew that if I kicked the dog out, life with Rose would be harder than ever to stand. So I let him stay. But the dog didn't like me any more than I liked him. <coughs> I stand guard over Rose. 
me, snarled every time I came near her. The tension got worse and worse between Rose and me, and she was constantly tormenting me with questions about what I was doing. I'd had all I could take, and this appendix operation with its chance to get rid of Rose came just in time to keep me from doing something far more risky. When they finally got me in the operating room and gave me the anesthetic, I'd calmed down. I felt good. 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 How do you feel, Mr. Carto? It's all over. All over, and you're fine. And Mr. Carto, your wife's here. Does she want to see me? Of course. And Mr. Carto, she's been worried about you. Oh, I didn't want to see Rose. I never wanted to see her again, but I figured it would look funny if I hadn't seen her, so... So she came in, in her usual mousy way. How do you feel, Al? Okay. Is there anything I can get you? I didn't answer her. Just closed my eyes, may believe I was asleep. Till a while she left. And at midnight, the nurse came in. Restless, Mr. Carto? No, I'm okay. Well, all right. I'll drop by later. When? Oh, in an hour or two. Make it two, for sure. As you wish, Mr. Carto. You can always ring for me. I waited about 15 minutes. Then I threw back the covers and sat up. I felt sore, but, but not too bad. Swung my legs over the bed, easy-like. Gripped the bedpost and stood up. Oh, that hurt. Plenty. But in a minute or two, the pain passed. And I shuffled on rubbery legs to the closet and leaned against the door. I started to get dizzy. I rested a minute and my head cleared. Then I got my clothes and took them back to the bed. Put my pants and shirt on over the hospital gown and put on my shoes without any socks. The narrow window was already up, and I twisted over the sill and slid gently to the cracked pavement of the alley. Walked slowly through the alley toward the street. Wasn't anyone in sight. Slipped around the building and in a few seconds ducked into another alley. Black as a coal mine in this alley, but I knew every inch of it. I'd played here when I was a kid. I reached the backyard and crossed into the one below my tenement. At the corner of my building, I, I felt the worn bricks and found the one I wanted. I pulled the brick out, put my hand in the hole and felt the cold steel of my gun. I slipped the gun into my pocket, edged towards the barrels that were always under the fire escape. I climbed onto the barrels and swung up in the fire escape without without too much pain. Uh, then I started a half crawl up the dirty iron steps when the rain started. It wasn't a hard rain, but it dropped in kind of a fine, soaking drizzle. I slipped once, and again my strength left me. I wanted to put my head down and go to sleep, but I forced myself to start climbing again. Every minute counted, that idiotic nurse might come back before she'd said she would. I kept climbing those grimy stairs. Climbing. Hurting. Climbing. Climbing. This was it. And the window was open. And the window to my bedroom and roses. I slithered to the sill and looked in. In the blackness of the room, I could just make out the form on the bed. I could feel the old excitement shooting through my veins. I was close, so close to my freedom from Rose that I was a little jumpy. But I felt great, as if I'd had a shot to stimulate me. I leveled my pistol with its silencer. The form on the bed twitched and lay still. It was over. Slipped the gun back in my pocket and began to back down the iron stairs. I reached the bottom twice as fast as I'd come up. I looked down, but 
but I couldn't make out the barrels in the darkness below. Oh, I had to drop down and feel for them with my feet. I lowered myself carefully. And, oh, the wound hurt and the strength was going. Oh! My fingers had slipped on the slimy, rain-soaked fire escape. I'd fallen hard on my side and my head had struck the edge of one of the barrels. I was hurt. Hurt bad. Something had happened to my wound. Oh, the pain was really bad. I lay there, and the rain dripped millions of drops on me. I finally staggered to my feet. I don't remember how I got the gun back in the wall, or, or hardly anything of the torturous trip back to the hospital. But I'd won. I was back in my room. In a minute, I'd be out of my clothes. I'd ring for the nurse, say I'd fallen out of bed. I fell my way to the closet, cut the clothes off, hung them up, and then my knees folded. I fell to the floor. I've got to get up again. I've got to reach the nurse's buzzer blur. I'm not thinking clear anymore. It's a dirty smudge covering the mirror in my mind. It's, it's getting black now. A black mirror. Black. Black mirror. Black. Such gross negligence I've never seen. A man dies because a hospital is too busy to keep an eye on him. But, Dr. Marini, Mr. Carter was fine when I saw him at 12. And that, too, he was on the floor dead? Yes, sir. Die. Uh, has his wife been notified? We've been calling Mrs. Carter on the phone since three this morning, but we've had no answer. You probably called the wrong number. All right, I'll take care of it myself. Better to see you personally anyway. I'll be back in 20 minutes. Oh, oh, Dr. Marini. May I come in, Rose? Oh, of course, Doctor. Rose, sit down, huh? My dear, I have some very bad news for you. Thank you, Doctor, for, for being so kind as to come here and tell me about Al. I'm terribly sorry, Rose. Doctor? Yes? Would you please come with me a minute? I, I want to show you something. Of course. Look in that room, Doctor. On the bed. Huh? Your dog? Yes, my shepherd dog, Tiny. Dead from two bullet shots. But, Rose, how... Doctor, the dog must have slept in my bed last night. You see, I wasn't here. I spent the night with my sister, Irene. Thank you, Boris Karloff, for a spine-tingling performance. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Karloff will be back in just a moment for a final word. But first, here's an important announcement. The United States Army is expanding and needs every young man and every young woman who is physically fit. By enlisting today, you'll be contributing your part to the history of tomorrow. Remember, protecting our freedom is a big job. But with everyone's help, it can be done. Visit the Army and Air Force recruiting station nearest your home. Talk to the recruiting sergeant. You'll learn from him the advantages you can gain by enlisting in the United States Army now. This transcribed program was presented by your Army and your Air Force in cooperation with this radio station and your local recruiting headquarters. The Big Man starred Boris Karloff and was written by Arnold G. Leo. Music was composed and conducted by John Guineri. The program was directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Joe Ripley speaking. And this is Boris Karloff inviting you to tune in this same station again next week for another of your Stars on Parade. <laughs>